Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. Today we're going to take a look at one of the clubs, one of the eight clubs in the Santa Barbara area. This club is the Rotary Club of Carpinteria. And with us today we have Barry Intignet. Barry, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Good. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your uh, Rotary experience. How long have you been in Rotary? Well, actually, that's a good question. I'm not really <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, maybe uh, 10 years, I guess. I'm oh, not, you okay. know. And you've been with the Rotary Club of Carpinteria that whole time? Yes, okay. exactly. Great. I think I might have taken a few uh, leaves of absence. My, uh, the reason we moved here was to be near family and grandkids, and we participated in homeschooling okay. for a couple of years. Great. But still active. Now, um, you said your, your kids are here. Um, what do they do uh, as far <laughs> as... <laughs> Work-wise, uh, entertainment-wise, things like that. Because it yeah, sounds like a pretty interesting family. I, I do. I do. <laughs> my, my son and family, my son lives up in Lompoc, and uh, he has a fencing business. Okay. And uh, he was always interested in motorcycle riding uh, as an amateur level. Okay. And now my two grandsons uh, both race on a professional level. Uh, the oldest one, Addy, will be in Supercross. Uh, maybe for uh, this may be his fourth year and the youngest one will be starting this year okay so we'll see him on TV in January <laughs> good hope for the best that sounds good <laughs> so what got you interested in rotary um, there were um, <clears throat> a number of things I think service clubs uh, are always uh, a passion uh, so that you can contribute to the community and the other thing was that uh, we, my wife and I moved from the East Coast to the West Coast and uh, didn't know the community, didn't know very many people at all. And so it was another way to learn about the community, meet members, other professionals, and then, uh, you know, work together for common goals. So that was really the reason I, I <laughs> picked it out. Very good. Uh, outstanding. Um, now, I realize and I understand that you are actually a fill-in, so because of the fact that returns <laughs> yeah. are so busy, I'm a weak uh, substitute. Pat Kistler was supposed <laughs> to have been here. Uh, she got called the way to city council meeting, I believe, for Galita Library, so she's yes, very she's, involved with that. Yes, uh, she's got a position uh, within the county okay. uh, where she's uh, supporting uh, library functions, and uh, they're hoping to do something with... Um, bond money mm -hmm. in Goleta, so we <laughs> wish them the best. Great. Libraries so, is a funny thing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we have a picture uh, of uh, Pat and your current president, I believe, uh, Richard Campos, right? Um, now, Pat was the immediate past president, so she ran your club last year? Yes, past president, and uh, she's also been active on the board for a number of years. Okay. Uh, I'm taking care of PR, but... Uh, a major contribution on her part is to uh, get us grants for a uh, public library. Okay. Actually, the very first public library in Panama. Wow, wow. Yeah. Okay, and that was a project that Rotary did then through your club? It's a Rotary project through okay. our club, and um, we also had support of the uh, Morning Rotary Club, mm -hmm. uh, also in Carpinteria. So, so financially, they were a partner. Okay, so there's two Rotary Clubs in Carpinteria, um, yours, yours and mine. Yes. Um, and you can be honest <laughs> with me here. Uh, is there any competition there, or do uh, they work pretty well together? I guess there's always <laughs> some kind of competition, but we try to do common projects. Yeah. And uh, as you know, uh, um, I volunteer uh, out at the National Park, and I've tried to include uh, your club in a number of outings that we've had on trips to the island, so that's been fun. So as far as community, I would say efforts and uh, support, mm -hmm. two clubs is great. A lot of There's things getting done. There's plenty to do, mm -hmm. plenty to do. Mm -hmm. um, another picture we have uh, shows a picture of a, a holiday party, it looks like, a, I believe it's a Christmas party with uh, Pat in the middle, so this must have been last year. Yeah. Quite a few members there that um, I recognize. You have Dave Durflinger, for example, who is uh, City manager of Carpinteria, correct? Yes, he's been city manager for quite a while. Okay, um, and then also in there I see uh, Craig Murray, who is a 
President-elect, as a matter of fact. Right. President-elect. And, and so he's very active in town. And he is also the um, director for the sanitation department, correct? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what his title is, but he, he's, he's uh, certainly the man. Okay, good. So you have quite a bit of influence, I would say, in the club itself, which is, uh, I would say, a benefit. And how do you see it as far as your club, having people like that in there? Do you notice things get done a little quicker, a little easier? Uh, have you attracted it, more? Uh, it, well, you probably noticed the building. So we actually meet at the Lions Club. <laughs> and, uh, but it's a very, very nice facility. Uh, but along with the facility that makes it interesting is you have such a diverse group. You know, we have uh, um, scientists, ministers, accountants, uh, all, all types and men and women so every all these different interests come together uh, and so it makes it easier to uh, create new enthusiasm about different types of projects Got it. everybody brings their own interests me included <laughs> <laughs> and what, by the way what did you do um, in uh, your working life you said you're a docent right now I believe but yeah yeah well I've always been interested in the birds and the bees. <laughs> so uh, okay. uh, when we got here, um, I went through uh, the training program with the National Park and the National Marine Sanctuary. So I volunteer on the whale watching trips and lead guided hikes on the islands. Oh, nice. So that was uh, kind of fun. But for the last few years, I've also been uh, uh, head of community service within the club. Okay. So. That's another way to kind of give back to the community that way and organize that. Right. Good, good. Um, another picture we have here is a picture of you with a, a group. I believe, oh, that's not you, but a, a no, picture with a scooter Somebody in bald there. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the scooter, what is, what is that representing there? Yeah, well, the scooter is one of our fundraising projects at the Avocado Festival, okay. which is a huge event in Carpinteria every year. And so we get one of the nonprofit booths, uh, talk about our different service projects in town, and then raffle off um, the scooter, which turns out to be one of our uh, bigger fundraising projects. Um, uh, and for the last few years, uh, the funds have gone to uh, the library and to the local school system to support a, uh, a purchasing of musical instruments. So the, uh, the high school then, the junior high school? Uh, Actually, it's the middle school the middle program. School. Okay. You know, introduce uh, music Got at it. a younger age seems okay. to be uh, a major contribution to kids nowadays. Very good. How outstanding. Um, another picture we have shows uh, a group there of um, high school, look like seniors. Um, that I believe is what's called Ryla Camp. Was that correct? On Ryla that Camp, we, um, we have a very uh, active interact club and we try to support uh, a number of those. I think this was a picture of a few years ago. A few years ago. And yeah. last year, I think we sent uh, five wow. uh, kids to uh, young high school students uh, to the Ryla program. Great. As does the uh, the morning club. Right. So we, both clubs, uh, contribute to um, making leaders out of our youth, which is, for me, couldn't be a better idea. Right. And by the way, RILA stands for Rotary uh, Youth Leadership Awards. So it's a leadership camp that goes over the weekend. I believe it's three, four days, yeah. Thursday to Sunday. And um, kids, uh, high school from all over the district, which is four different counties, come in. There. There's close to 220 uh, that attend this. So it's, it's pretty big. So for you to send in five, that's, that's a great job. What do you, did you get out of, uh, or did they get out of it? Have they ever talked to you about what the experience was like for them? Have you uh, heard? We do get feedback. When the kids uh, come back sometime later, uh, we schedule them as part of our uh, monthly rotary programs, mm -hmm. and they'll talk to us about their experience. But where I learned the most was my youngest granddaughter, um, I went to school in uh, uh, up, nor uh, up in northern Santa Barbara County, and she really learned a lot about leadership and applied it while she was in high school. So um, I um, couldn't 
uh, speak more highly of the program that they have there just because of personal knowledge right, that right. she really got a lot out of it. That's good. And used it throughout high school. She went as a freshman, actually. Oh, she did? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Generally speaking, it's uh, sophomores and juniors, I believe, is the Generally age. speaking, but uh, she was uh, an out, well, still is an outstanding student. Great. Um, and just shows you could be a leader in high school. Right, uh, and I hear it's uh, life-changing for quite a few of them. Yeah. I don't know if your granddaughter experienced that, but the ones I've seen, uh, they are quite life-changing. Um, and one example was I met a girl that was with Girls Incorporated, and they sent uh, uh -huh. somebody along that route. She went over there very shy. She came back, and I go, what did you get out of uh, the Ryla camp? And her response was, I got a voice. I learned how to talk and I could speak for myself. And I thought that was quite remarkable of a girl that age, being able to reflect back on that experience. She ended up going to um, New York, actually for a speech competition after that, believe it or not, in high school also. My granddaughter did exactly the same thing. Right? We went to uh, Northern California where she was involved in public speaking events. It was phenomenal how far they can take uh, three days uh, and make a, such a huge difference true. in their lives. Very true. Um, next picture we have shows um, a Christmas tree. Uh, I believe these are what we call the uh, intera uh, yeah, Interact students, is that correct? Yeah, this, we actually have an extremely active uh, Interact program. We're proud to say that we uh, um, started off with about 30 members. This is huge. Um, a lot to do uh, with our current president, Rich, who's built it up over the last few years. Um, but something new that may have contributed to uh, additional interest is our foundation provides a couple of uh, scholarships, one of which uh, has a requirement that you need to be a member uh -huh of uh, this particular group. So it's for um, college? College-bound? College. College-bound students, okay. specifically uh, for someone who participates in this uh, youth program. That's great. That is great. Are there, um, I would say, direction on that? Is it for tech schools? Is it for universities? Uh, well, so or? far, our students have been absolutely unbelievable, outstanding. Uh, first year went to MIT, wow. and this last year was Harvard. <laughs> and so, um, so they need the Carpinteria money. Carpinteria <laughs> has some bright students and they need the money. <laughs> Very good. Okay, great. Um, another picture that we see here is, um, uh, this is you giving away, looks like a flute or a clarinet. Uh, yeah, clarinet. well, actually I'm being yeah. presented okay. with a clarinet okay. um, uh, by Linda Lang, a, a longtime Carpenter resident and uh, just retired from being a uh, director of the local chamber of commerce. Okay. Uh, but she uh, had an old flute and she wanted to donate it to our club. And uh, it's part of our program where we're trying to collect 50 instruments uh, and to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Carpinteria. Um, I'm pleased to say that we kicked it off uh, er earlier in the year, but so far we've got 42 instruments. <laughs> And we've collected uh, somewhere around $1,500 to help refurbish all of these instruments. So our goal is to not only refurbish them, but give them a new case. And then all of the middle school students at high school uh, will be able to choose an instrument. That's great. Now, you've been doing this for a while, I believe, but without the, I would say, the 50 goal of 50 instruments for yeah, 50 we're, years. I think later on we have a photograph of our talent show, mm -hmm. uh, which has been a, a major success, and we've run it for a number of years. And unfortunately, um, the uh, last few years, uh, we've been able to buy brand new instruments for the school. Uh, not only did we buy instruments, but we bought music and wow. some storage. Uh -huh. for the instruments. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, so it's great to be able to contribute to the music program. Uh, you and I were talking earlier. Uh, the development of music at an early age contributes significantly in the development of uh, young people's minds, and um, yeah. music is just another avenue. Uh -huh. So we're glad to support that. Good. Now, before this, um, you shared with me that you had a, 
created a quote wish list from the middle school that was uh, quite lofty as far as fundraising efforts. So I yeah, would imagine we've been buying all these instruments, <laughs> and we thought because this year we were able to. Uh, well, actually, it was at the end of the last year, but uh, the talent show was actually in February. But uh, anyway, with the money that we got, we thought we were really going to be able to make a dent, uh, but realized that there was no way. And so at the end of the talent show, with the number of people that were involved in the 50th anniversary and the enthusiasm of John Promontary, all of a sudden... Uh, <laughs> we're going to collect 50 instruments uh, at this 50th year. Wow. Um, another picture we see uh, is a picture of, uh, looks like your club planting. Uh, yeah, this was one of the um, community service projects that I planned a few years ago. And uh, it was great. We got uh, a number of our uh, club members. We purchased uh, native plants. Um, and then with Ryla, um, we... Uh, Planted uh, in the in the Carpinteria Bluffs, okay. uh, a public uh, park. Okay, it's a preserve. Actually, it's a preserve. Yeah. Actually, yeah. yeah. So anyway, that was a great project. We, you know, sort of another way to contribute. Good, um, pretty good uh, participation. I see there. So you said you had some of the high school people there. Some we of the had club the high members. school people, a couple of club members. I forget now what the turnout was, but. Um, it's surprising what can be accomplished when you can get, and we'll get maybe 20 of the high school kids to show up. It's a very active group. Okay, great, uh, great. And we could have used, we use their energy as well. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Saves the back too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another picture we have here shows um, a group with some instruments. I believe this was at the this was at the Rods and Roses. Rods and Roses, okay. Rods and Roses is in early July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had a, a booth, um, and we were trying to raise funds and talk about our service project. And locally, uh, this was the big kickoff. This is when we officially started to collect instruments. Uh, and here's uh, one of the locals dropping off. Uh, and uh, actually, I think she donated maybe three instruments. Oh, nice. So that was great. So that was part of the 50 instrument That was part about. of the 50 instrument drive. And you can see there's a couple of Rotarians mm -hmm. hanging around in the background, you know, entertaining public. Uh -huh. That is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, the, another picture we have shows, uh, looks like it's probably your club do, loading up a, a dumpster there. Yeah, this is uh, an annual event. Uh, that may have, that's been going on as long as the city has been having city cleanup and hazardous waste do that day. So our club uh, always turns out, uh, you know, all hands on deck for this particular event. I know sometimes your club will come and participate, but basically it's a one day where people can bring carload after carload of all their junk. <laughs> and uh, with the help of uh, uh, E.J. Harrison, uh, and one of the family members is actually a club member. Uh, so, yeah, so we load all these dumpsters all day and haul it off. Yeah. Clean up the city. So it's Carpenter Cleanup Day. I believe it's in the spring. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I forget now. I, I, I think that's when it was. You, you I probably, think they call it a spring clean. So. Spring clean. Yeah, yeah, I believe that's it. Well, that's, that's a great one there. And I imagine... That's a, a lot of work for, for your club there. Huh? It's physical a lot of work. Wise. Physical wise, you have to pace yourself. <laughs> I'd say on that one, you should probably get the high schoolers involved there too. <laughs> Actually, you know, we have other photographs and we do get the high school oh, kids good. to come on over okay. uh, because we've got not only uh, uh, this kind of waste, but we're collecting uh, electronic waste. So they usually over there piling up all the used TVs <laughs> and DVRs and, and whatnot. And then... Uh, the city with the uh, Carpinteria Beautiful at the end of the afternoon, uh, they'll put on a little barbecue for us. Oh, nice. So it's always a nice, oh, that is nice, nice feed. That is nice. Um, another picture shows um, a planting team, it looks like, getting ready to plant. I believe yeah, this, this was another community service project that uh, I organized. I forget now which year it was, but the, uh, the cemetery 
um, had uh, need uh, to create uh, some natural privacy between uh, their property and the adjoining property. And you can see they had sort of a privacy fence, mm -hmm. but they needed more to go. So we, again, here what we did was uh, purchase uh, a number of trees, and then with, with the group plus more, uh, we dug holes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, next picture we see um, shows the Brewery Boys with the Rotary logo there. Um, tell us a little bit about that one. Well, we have uh, Paul, the local brewer, is also a member of our club, and uh, this was actually Relay for Life, okay. uh, where our club was, along with the brewery, were one of the sponsors uh, for the event. And uh, Paul, along with another club members, are also a member of the band. <laughs> okay. And so the band was playing at this particular event, along with everything else that was going on. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. So it's an all-day event. And I got to bring up this other guy here that's holding the sign, uh, Bob yes. Berkemeyer. We, Berkemeyer. Can't, we can't leave him out of it, Absolutely right? Absolutely not. He's an old-time <laughs> member. He's in actually a, a number of these photographs, and uh, he's donated his time. Past president has also volunteered his professional help uh, as a dentist and spent time in Africa donating time. So uh, there's a lot of Rotarians doing different projects in our clubs. So I understand he also does local uh, clinics. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Volunteer free clinics to help out in the local areas. Santa Barbara and I believe Carpentry also, correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and he's and all his, over. his wife is also a Rotarian, I believe. Yes, she's a Rotarian <laughs> donating her time in your club. In my club. <laughs> I'd say that's probably the major portion of the controversy between the two clubs there, right? <laughs> that is. Some family <laughs> dynamics going right, on there. Right. Very good. Um, we have a couple more pictures that we're showing of, um, looks like your team, and uh, working with triathlon, possibly? It's the triathlon. One of our past, past presidents, uh, Rosemary Fanuki, uh, who unfortunately passed away with cancer, but um, in her honor, our club continues to uh, support that particular booth at the triathlon. So we hand out water. And sometimes uh, I don't see too many funny hats, but sometimes <laughs> we show up with funny hats because that was something Rosemary used to do. Ah, okay. So yeah. that's, uh, that's also kind of fun as these guys are speeding by their bicycles trying to give them the water before you fall over. <laughs> right, right. Um, and now a picture at the, uh, of, of uh, the Escuela. It's a school, I believe. This is your project in Panama? This is a project that... Uh, Pat put together okay. in Panama. It's been going on now for, um, I, I would say, like four years. Um, the first, each grant is like a two-year grant. And uh, fortunately, one of her very close uh, friends, uh, work colleague, retired in Panama. And with the connections that we have there, we've actually established the very first public library in Panama. Wow. Uh, to date, we've got two, and we're working on a third. Now, these are in very, very remote villages uh, where there is no electricity. So along with uh, providing a library, and by library, I don't mean the building and everything, uh, we may uh, provide s materials for inside the building but we're providing basically the books and with our connections, the librarians oh. who live in Panama um, and who are helping us establish them. We've also provided uh, solar power lights, another rotary project, and we've provided all these kids with lights so they can actually read in the evening. So it, it's here again, uh, supporting youth yeah and yeah. Uh, so this year we're going to do the third library and hopefully we'll be able to find enough energy to uh, get another grant okay. uh, and then continue and maybe with your club's help huh <laughs> without a doubt yeah. <laughs> I want you to speak up now we're, we're there for you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very good there Barry <laughs> you should have my seat <laughs> um, 
I know they've been very successful. I've seen some of the pictures that have come back from the project sites themselves, and it seems like it was definitely a need for that specific area. Have you had a chance or have you seen any members from your club besides Pat getting to go down to actually experience what that looks like, how it's we being done? We had uh, planned uh, to go there last year with Pat, uh, but Pat was president last year. Uh, there were also uh, some family health issues, and so the whole thing kind of got canceled. Uh, but I believe that if not this year, next year when we put the new grant together, uh, I know that um, I'm uh, planning to go with a few other members um, and see what we've done and try to meet other Rotarians in Panama City and see if we can't partner with them to help us uh, with this project. Great. Uh, that's outstanding. Uh, I know she's been twisting my arm to go down also, so hopefully I'll be on one of those trips with you. Yeah, well, that'll yeah. be great. Um, last picture I have uh, shows the talent show, so I need to, I'd like to hear a little bit about this talent show you guys do. I believe this is your big event, correct? This is the big event. Uh, we're fortunate enough in our club to uh, have a, a 501c3 foundation, and uh, through all of our club efforts, we've been able to uh, get a sizable uh, endowment. The endowment actually is paying for our two uh, high school scholarships, $2,500 each. Wow. So that's now perpetual. Uh, plus, we're supporting um, in smaller uh, pieces uh, community projects. But the big thing that we're supporting is instruments for the middle school. So through our talent show, uh, the proceeds go to buy brand new instruments, and now we're on the 50 instruments, so we got both things going at once. But the talent show itself has been a wonderful event. Uh, we bring uh, local talent, not only from Carpinteria, but all around Santa Barbara and now Ventura, the public theater, uh, the Plaza Theater now has another venue. We roll out the red carpet, and um, all the Rotarians are dressed in the tux, and we're looking, we're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, Barry, thank you very much for sharing what your club's doing. Uh, one outstanding club. I know Carpenter has been very, uh, very instrumental with the support from all of the Rotarians there. So thank you very much to you and your club. With that, I would like to uh, first say that uh, clubs throughout all of the areas, Santa Barbara, Goleta, wherever, are making a huge difference in their community. If you want to get involved, take a look at some of the local clubs, see what they're doing. And with that, thank you very much, and we'll see you at the next show.